Hi, Ashley. Hey, Ashley. Okay, hi. How's it going? Thank you, guys. Uh, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, very, yeah. very happy. Very happy to be here. Uh, uh, thank you, guys, for giving me the opportunity today to talk about Angular Reactive Forms. Yeah, thank, thank you for, for, for making us. DevCon what it is. Um, <laughs> All right. Um, well, Ashley, um, you come for the. This is the first time you're doing a live stream, or? <laughs> yeah, this is the first time. Yeah, first time live stream. <laughs> nice. Hey. Okay. So go ahead. Uh, just give a brief introduction of who you are and what you do, and then uh, we can move on to the session. So um, yeah, hi everyone. So um, currently, I'm working as a system analyst at the Mauritius Revenue Authority. So uh, for the past five years, approximately, I've been doing web and mobile development. And uh, so my favorite stack is Spring and Angular and mobile development using Ionic. And yeah, so here I am uh, sharing a bit about my knowledge, my passion about Angular and how reacting forms can be useful for you guys. Yep. Yeah. You. Your, your stack is kind of like, um... The, the same domain, but the different one that I use. I usually use like React um, for React Native for mobile. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, this is going to be interesting. I'm definitely psyched for it. Um, let's leave the floor to you. And uh, for the viewers, same as always, leave your feedback, leave some questions, and don't be afraid to chat. We, I mean, we are yes. nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enjoy the show. Actually so uh, so hi guys so here I am so um, just a bit about myself so like I was saying uh, system analyst at the MOA so being doing mobile development using Ionic and uh, so front-end development using jQuery and Angular uh, back-end development using Java frameworks Java E and Spring I'm also Java certified um, blockchain certified in IBM and uh, I've also had some experience in uh, network and system administration when, when I was working at the Mauritius Post. And so just some prerequisite, uh, maybe for this, for this session. So some basic knowledge about web, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and some basic knowledge in Angular. Uh, this, is the GitHub, uh, this is the GitHub repo, so you guys can just uh, maybe just go really quickly and just uh, check out and maybe you can just uh, see the code and if there's any question later, maybe after you can just ask me some question. Uh, so that's the that's the agenda. So um, just going to briefly just going to introduce you to forms, uh, usually how we are handling forms uh, currently. And uh, I just want to show you guys an, alter an alternative way uh, how we can do validation using Angular Reactive Forms. Uh, just going to talk a bit also about the concept uh, that's used, uh, that's being used in Angular Reactive Forms, not only in, Re in Angular Reactive Forms, but uh, in Angular usually, uh, using what is the reactive style. Uh, then we're going to actually dive in into uh, form control. What are the APIs uh, that you can use for Angular Reactive Forms, form control? Uh, we're going to also, also uh, jump at control state. Uh, what are the different state control has, valid, invalid, touch, untouch, pristine, uh, dirty. So uh, we're going to talk also about form builder, form group, um, how you can build your own custom validators, uh, what is component-based form, uh, if in case you have dynamically controlled fields that uh, you don't know how many fields uh, you're going to have in advance, you can use form array. Uh, how, what is uh, asynchronous validation? Uh, also, how you can update your form model. And if, if we have time, so we're going to look at dynamic forms. OK, so uh, just, uh, just a bit about Angular Reactive Forms uh, myself. So when I started web development, uh, we've been doing actually validation using vanilla JavaScript and jQuery. And you have really complex form actually at, at MOA. I mean, you guys have been filing your taxes, and you have seen uh, the number of fields, the number of validation that we have, and uh, especially with vanilla JavaScript and jQuery, I mean, it has been quite uh, a challenge for us. And when we started, when we embark um, into the mobile deployment at MOA, um, so we wanted to do something different. And uh, so we went around and we look at different different frameworks and 
And actually, we we stopped. I mean, uh, we 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 chose Ionic framework because we wanted to use Angular. Uh, Angular actually uh, give you so many APIs for uh, doing uh, validation of forms, and especially for for complex one. And this has really helped us uh, tremendously at MOI. And um, not only Angular reactive form, but the whole ecosystem of Angular has really helped us. I mean, I can, you know, uh, data binding, uh, pipes, templates, component, uh, so many things uh, that Angular has offered, has offered us. I mean, Angular is a, is a framework, not a library. So uh, that has really helped us. So, and reactive forms is a bit, you know, the icing on the cake. Uh, that uh, really help you, you know, to do validation for complex forms. Uh, just say, uh, just an introduction of forms. I mean, I'm sure you guys, you know, uh, just want to collect data uh, and send it back to our servers uh, before you want to maybe before you want to save to a database. You want to validate the form. You want to validate that data. So how you can validate that data? Maybe you can validate the front end. You can also validate in the back end as well. And um, usually, when we talk about forms, there are so many controls today. Uh, there are so many UIs. Maybe you can, maybe you can uh, Angular Material as well has so many, so many controls. And um, actually, in the last in the last demo, we're going to see uh, dynamic forms. Uh, I've been using the control called Stepper, Stepper Control, and that uh, has this. This also actually uh, make your development really, really fast. And uh, yeah, so how do we do form validation? That's uh, that's nowadays. Um, so that's usually, you know, if, if any for any simple form will do vanilla JavaScript and jQuery. Uh, you can also do backend validation using Spring MVC. Uh, also today, nowadays, you have uh, Java-based UI framework, uh, Vadin, uh, JSF. Uh, if I'm also not mistaken, you have Vue as well that has um, some form APIs that can help you, and you have Angular temp template uh, template driven forms. But uh, in my in my opinion, I mean uh, template driven forms maybe are for simple one. And if you have really complex form with complex logic, complex validation, I would really advise you to go guys with uh, Angular reactive forms. Okay. Okay, what is uh, what is Angular Reactive Form? So it's model driven. I mean, uh, compared to uh, I'll just say you know in the Angular ecosystem, uh, you have Angular template driven, right? The template driven mean like like the word is saying in template. I mean every everything is defined in the template, and uh, that's going to make your template very bloated, and it's kind uh, make it a bit challenging as well. But uh, there's an alt alternating way, you know, when you can actually, uh, that's that's the one Angular reactive forms, that model driven, that everything is defined in in your in your component in your in your TypeScript file, and the use cases uh, use cases, especially for us at MOI, I mean, uh, we have complex validation, front end validation, back end validation. Uh, our forms are dynamic, and and trust me, uh, I have tried it with uh, jQuery. And JavaScript, it's challenging. I've tried it with template driven forms, it's also challenging. And then uh, we decided to move to Angular reactive forms. And it has been a blessing for us. And it has really helped us. It's very flexible, it's very neat. And uh, it's leverage uh, RxJS. RxJS, uh, those are the reactive uh, extension JavaScript. Um, how you actually can uh, listen to any changes, and you can react accordingly based on those uh, based on those values. Uh, I, I, I'm just going to explain uh, uh, what do I mean to listening uh, to something and react accordingly. Uh, so that's the that's one of the concept. Uh, maybe uh, any Angular developer. I mean, uh, when you talk about observable and observer, right? Uh, maybe your HTTP client, uh, whenever you're making a backend call, right? I mean, it returns uh, an observable. And uh, to be able uh, to get those values from this HTTP uh, data, you have to subscribe to that observable. So that's a bit, um, maybe uh, you guys know about what's the observer design pattern, uh, where, you, where we have the subject. The subject is 
uh, the one that's producing the values that that's what you want to watch and then you have the observer uh, that's where uh, you want the observer actually is, is, is watching the, those values they want to subscribe uh, to this subject to get those values so in the angular angular ecosystem you have the observable that's the that's the source of the values so it can be uh, an HTTP uh, client that's uh, calling an API it can be your mouse event that you want to that you want to listen and it can be a form control those values uh, that you want to listen to those values and uh, the other counterpart is the observer uh, that's the consumer one and uh, so uh, if you want to actually get those values, you have to subscribe to that observable and you will get the values. And uh, basically you can, uh, based on that value, you can act accordingly. You can, uh, we'll just see in later, what, what do I mean on, on that part? Uh, I'm just going to switch back to my ID really quick. Uh, just to want to show you. Okay, uh, here is actually, uh, I'm just, uh, you have a form control here. I'm just going to back really here really quick just to make it side by side. Okay. So whenever whenever you want to use a form control standalone without any form, so just going to use the form control here. That's one of the uh, API uh, that Angular provides us. And in case, uh, how do you want to reference in, in your template? Use that one. That's the form control. And you see we, we have the square brackets. So whenever we have a square bracket, that means we are referring something in our in our uh, component. So that's the name here. That's what, what we are referencing. And um, now, uh, if you want to actually want to use that that control, so you have to instantiate that uh, using this using a new form control. That's a constructor. So I can just go to that. That's the source code for the Angular forms that does, this is the form state. If you want a, the form to have some values uh, when you when your, uh, when your page is loading, so you can just put the, your initial values here and then you have your validators. We're just gonna go that uh, in details later. So what's uh, really interesting here is that um, I'm just gonna, this form controls, this, uh, there's one property called value changes. Value changes actually return an, an observable. And now, how you want to uh, how you want to subscribe to an observer? You need you need an observer. And how you create an observer is that you have free actually free free handlers. You have next. Next actually give you uh, what's the next values. Error in case there's an error. And then complete is when the stream is completed. And now uh, that value changes. If you if you just do that, nothing will flow. So to get the flow of data, you have to subscribe to this observable, that's the observer. So that's, uh, let's see, I'm just gonna go back really quick here. That's the demo here. So that's those values. So as you can see here, I'm, I'm having my, my value here. Okay. And here in the, in my console, in the console.log, I'm just outputting the, the value here. You can see my values here as well. Okay, this is the value. So I'm just subscribing to that. But usually, uh, you won't really, you, you won't have to do that. You won't have to define an observer. Uh, if you, let's, let's, let's have an, another look at another observer, is status changes. A status changes give you uh, what's the status of the observer, maybe it's valid, if, if it's valid or invalid. And here you can just do that. Uh, in the subscribe method, you can just define your observer here. That's it, and you have your data here. Uh, that's what I'm doing here, and that's, this is valid. Before it was valid, the status was invalid, here in the log. And then once uh, my validation works, it will be valid. So uh, that's the concept that we're going to build. That's a really important concept in Angular Reactive Forms. And actually, we're going to use that a lot. I'm just going to build on that. Okay, let's move on right now. So here, here, that's the template, okay. Uh, form builder. I'm just going to check out really quick another branch. Okay. Um, 
Okay, that's the form builder. Uh, and when this is the whole, the whole, um, the whole ecosystem of Angular reactive forms. Uh, that's the basic. That's the base. That's a base control, abstract control. Even in template driven form, we use abstract control. And th there are so many properties here: value, valid, pending, status. We're going to use all of that later. And then we have some method. Those are the set validators, set async validators, batch value, set value. And then we have done is that we have form control, and then we have form group and form array. And Form control is that when you want to act, uh, just like we have seen now, control you want to use the VCN alone without any form, or you can use a form control inside the form. We have form group, that's a collection of control. As you can hear in the constructor, we have controls that take as a parameter and an object, an object of uh, key, and then the abstract control. And then you have form array. Uh, that's really interesting. Uh, that's really interesting when you have actually uh, dynamic dynamic fields and that's take an array of abstract control and all these three classes actually extend abstract control so you get so you can get all those uh, properties and and, and and method here so you can use them down and then we have form builder uh, that's uh, instead just like we have seen we're using the constructor to uh, define a form control a form group it's uh, every time you don't have to use the constructor right so what's the form builder give us it's an easier way actually to create so you can actually think of form builder as a factory to create a form control a form group a form array uh, what is the now let's look at the first the first pillar of angular forms the form control so it might ma manages and value the variety of an individual form control so it will it will usually correspond to any ui element an input a select or a checkbox or a radio button and the directives that we're going to look actually in this demo is form control and form control name. Okay, so uh, we have seen uh, now how we can, uh, if you want to instantiate a form control and use it uh, with a template. So that's your form control. So you can actually instantiate it without uh, with uh, your initial state, or you can actually instantiate it with a, your your valid. It can be a single validator or an array of validators. And here uh, we're using form control. Uh, there's a difference between using form control and form control name. Here we're using that control as a standalone field. Uh, that's what we're using the square bracket to be able to reference that particular uh, variable here. And we're going to have a look at form control name later. And we have other uh, properties that we have uh, over, uh, we have over status. Uh, I haven't put ev everything here, so we have invalid. Uh, the one that I'm using one property here. So in case that uh, your validators fail, so you can use that uh, with your ng style, uh, one directive ng style. So in case your control is invalid, so you can just apply a very simple CSS. So we can just uh, just go that really quick. Okay. So that so here's my uh, CSS. So it's appearing right. So that's the ng style. So once my name is invalid, it will apply that CSS. Otherwise, uh, if I respect the validation, so it will just go back. That's it. And here downwards, I'm just going to look here really quick here. Okay. So here also I can output what are the validation errors. So I'm still referencing to that uh, form control that name. And in case there's errors, errors means if it's invalid. And what kind of uh, er what kind of validation? So Angular has some built-in validators uh, like required, mean, max, and so those are simple one, and you can create your custom one like I'm going to show later. And um, here is just that uh, once the once the control uh, is in error, so it's just going to display both validators. But uh, if you see here, right, the, the the issue we're having here, I mean, let's say. Uh, you're just loading your page, right? I mean, you, you won't just show a red field like that, right? I mean, uh, I mean, it, it, it will kind of put up the user. So there are other ways that uh, we can show those errors. Okay. Okay, we have control. This is, this is very important. Uh, I actually use that when you want to actually uh, show uh, something to your user. Like, like I was saying, right, let's say your page load, you won't just show that. 
right? It's it's kind. Uh, you want actually the user to interact with your control to be able to. Uh, then it will show some errors. So then we have uh, those are the control state. We have valid and invalid. Let's say when your control has failed, your validation. Uh, touch and touch. That's uh, when the user has touched the field. And uh, and then we have dirty and pristine. Is that when the user has changed the value in the field? By default, uh, all controls are untouched and pristine. We're just going to uh, show some details. Show you demo really quick. Okay, that's here. Okay, I'm just going to load the form. I'm just uh, I'm putting all the status here, right? As you can see here, uh, the status control of pristine is true, and then touch is true. When I start interacting with the form, now I've touched the form. As you can see, touch has touch has become true, and touch is false. If I want to change the value, as you can see, dirty is true, and then pristine is form. And these th these are these are really really uh, helpful status that you you can use. Uh, that once the, the the your user can interact with your controls and you can show uh, it's up to you how how you want to show it at, at moa we don't use uh, pristine touch or we just use when the form is submitted so we'll let the user you know uh, write everything and then on submit then we'll uh, we'll show the errors but maybe you you how you, you want you want to show the errors uh, or interact with your user maybe based on these on on these when maybe when he has Touch the field or when it has changed the value. Okay. So uh, let's move on. Okay. Um, here um, I'm using the so and whenever touch. the value has changed or when the uh, user has interacted with the control, then I'm going to show the show the value. It's going to load it in. Okay. So this is the part. Okay. okay. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so I was just uh, mentioning about uh, form builder. Uh, just think about it, maybe how uh, just like a factory, uh, factory maybe the creation of design pattern. Uh, how you want to create objects? Uh, just an easier way for us to create uh, controls, form builders, form groups. Uh, sorry, not form builders, form group, form arrays. Uh, how you use it? Use it for dependency injection. Uh, actually, just uh, use it in your constructor there. Constructor dependency injection, and it's very convenient when you have several forms. Uh, when you want, well, let's say you have a form group. Let's say you want to have ten fields. You just want to. You you, you just want to uh, keep doing. You know. New new form control, new form control, right? So just give you an easy way to define. I'll, I'll just show that how we can how we can uh, use form builder to create a form group. Okay, so uh, this is the way. Uh, just show, this is how we can gonna use with constructor and new form control. But with form builder on the on the other side here, uh, you can see here we are injecting the form builder. Uh, using constructor constructor dependency injection, and here uh, we just do uh, this dot fb dot control, and then you just say the same thing here. You can initialize with any form state that on you your form load, or you can just put your validators here. Right. Okay. Uh, that's the one. So we form builder, and now uh, let's move to form group. Uh, that's where you want to have a collection of control. That's the second pillar of Angular Forms. Uh, it's also an abstract control because it extends uh, the class abstract control. Uh, it's, uh, it manages the value and validity of a fixed size collection of abstract control. And um, the, the, the coolest thing here is that uh, the, valid, the validity, right, it's the, uh, let's say, um, in your forms, you have 10 fields or 10, 15 fields, right? If one of the fields is invalid, automatically the form group will be invalid. Uh, so that's the reduction of all the, the child status values. And uh, here uh, you have two directives. You have form group and form group name. And just a small typo here. Doesn't supposed to be uh, 
the square bracket here. I'm just going to change that later. So let's move that. So that's the, let's say we have a form with two fields, personal information. We have first name and last name. Okay, so how are we going to define it here? Okay, so that's your main form, and that's how you want to group, just a beta group. And here you've got, you're going to define two forms, first name and L name. And here, um, if you look at the form control name, here we're not using uh, the, square, uh, the square brackets, we're using form control name. Form control name means, that means uh, you want to tell Angular to Angular forms to look up uh, this uh, form group by using F name. So before uh, we, we were telling it was directly referencing to a variable in your component, but right now, since we have several fields, so it will look up uh, by using the F name. It will look up the form group by using the F name. And here we have F name and last name. And uh, what's going to change here is if you want to show the errors, right? I mean, uh, you you have to do the main form, the get. Okay, that's, uh, you want to get uh, what is the control you want to have. You want to actually uh, look at, and then here the errors. And here the errors that required. As you can see here, uh, this is being repetitive, right? I mean, it's kind of making your form a bit um, bloated. So what you can do is that you can create a getter property in your in your component here that just going to reference that form. That's it. And here you can just I can just repeat that one. Okay. By f name. So here it's much, it's much, it's much cleaner, right? I Meaning I just remove that. Okay. Be much, much, much cleaner. And uh, this is also really important because tomorrow, if your structure of your phone changes, if you have nested form, right? You, you don't have actually to, to go around your template and change everything. Since you already have, you, since you already created a, a getter property here, uh, uh, that's actually is referencing that control. So you, you, you can just come here and just change that value and it will, and it will, and it will automatically works. Okay. And uh, regarding forms also, I'm just going to look at the form element. Here we're using form group, right? That's one, uh, what I've said. So here we're using the square, the square bracket, man. So that means we're referencing a specific uh, variable in your component. That's the main form. We have ng submit, okay? Uh, so that's an output event. So uh, let's say you have a button of type submit. So once you click that, but that button, it will automatically execute that, 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 that handler. So you can put your handler here, submit form, and we can just, you can use that form here. So here, uh, what's form here? Okay, that's a template reference variable. So what you're doing is that you're actually exporting that ng form in your in a template reference variable and you can use uh, several properties of that uh, template reference variable like submitted what i've used here submitted errors there are several things that you can use in your template and you can use that here also maybe let's say if you know if form sorry, if form is valid okay then proceed else no don't proceed and you can just show something else. So these are uh, simple stuff that Angular allows you to do. Okay, so let's move on. So these are the slides that you can refer later. I just highlighted some of the very uh, important stuff that you guys have to look. Okay. Uh, yes, here I just mentioned I created that getter property to be able to reference the form in case not to make your form too bloated. So you can just use that getter property in your templates. Okay, uh, custom validators, right? Uh, we have we look at we have look at cust at uh, sorry uh, built-in validators in Angular. So those are very simple one. And um, when actually I have worked previously with template driven forms. Uh, it's very difficult, very challenging uh, to do custom validators. We have you have to create a directive, 
and here you have so and then your directive you have so many imports that you have to do and it's it's, it's very very challenging yeah. custom variety in in reactive forms it's very simple to do a custom validator they are just regular functions that you that that you that you define in your component in your type script file and uh, here uh, what it take what it take as at as a parameter is an abstract control has an argument and it, and what will it return it will return a type of validation errors so um, i'm just going to check out I'm just going to commit that part I'm just change that right to see B2. Oh. Okay, print five. Okay, so I'm just open that here for the validator. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's the validator function, right? So what's the validator function here? What is take as an argument is an abstract control, and what it returns is written by addition errors. I, I, I can say you know the Angular Angular documentation is really good. The source code is very easy. If you come from a you know uh, object object oriented background, so it, it's it's very easy for you. So you can just go for documentation and understand it, and you can just write it accordingly. It's very 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 easy. And um, and in case that uh, let's say your uh, custom validator depend on some property, right? So what you have to do is that you have to create a factory function, a factory function that return a validator function. So I'm just going to show you real quick. So that's a custom validator function uh, that takes you know an abstract control as a parameter, just has the ang uh, Angular documentation source code showed us, and that returns a validation errors or null. So here, uh, as you can see here, the validation error is just a very simple one. Uh, it's return an object with a key here, string of type string, and in. So that's that's what we we are returning here. A key here, and uh, what you can return here uh, is a is a string or anything else. Um, and in case you wanna, in case your custom validator uh, take uh, take you know depends on some property. So what you do is that you do what you write is a we call that a factory function that return a validator function uh, that takes an abstract control as an argument and return a validation errors. Uh, that's your that's your argument. That's your property that you depend on. And uh, just for argument's sake, uh, maybe uh, as we're going to see in the demo later. Okay, um, maybe we have mobile numbers and fixed phone numbers, right? And these addition of different mobile numbers gonna start with five and, and fixed line actually, you know, maybe start with six or uh, fixed line is seven characters and mobile numbers are eight lines. So just for argument's sake, you can just uh, create something like that. And uh, maybe uh, you can, based on that uh, example, you can write your own uh, custom parameterized by data function. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, let me just check this out. Launch brand five. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm just going to show you for this one for this personal information. We we're actually going to do that in different ways. First way is that let's say you have your main form, right? I can just define it very the standard way. We have f name, last name, address, and phone, right? So that's just the basic that you can do. And here's your phone by data factory that right? I'm just going to take. So in case that uh, this is a fixed, uh, this is if, if, if this is a uh, mobile number, so I'm just going to use mobile here, right? And just going to give me the appropriate valid data here, function. So here's your component, right? So I'm just going to define all my phone control name, a name, address, and phone, right? That's how that's how we, we we do it. And but another way is that you can use nested okay. forms. Uh, okay. uh, maybe uh, maybe tomorrow the, the model that's coming from your backend, right? Let's say if it's flat, right? If it's just flat, a, a flat JSON that's coming up, you can just put F name and name, address and phone, right? Uh, tomorrow, if you if you decide maybe to do nested object. Maybe you have personal info and then F name, mail name, contact info, address and form, right? So you can just bring that JSON up 
and just uh, just we, we're going to show you later how you can actually uh, uh, sorry update your form and I'm just going to just change branch out really quick here. OK, yeah, this is personal info. That's your nested form. As you can see here, we're using another directive called form group name. That's contact info. OK, and here just going to the same. And what's going to change here, OK, is personal info name. OK, this part, OK. And uh, that's uh, another nice way uh, of actually referencing to a control, right? Because before you have to do get personal info dot control the name, right? So so then they introduce uh, that way to for nested forms that you can reference to to do that control. Cool. Let's move on. Okay, that's your template. That's your template. Another way, uh, maybe uh, you know, uh, Angular, every, every an Angular is a component, right? So you just want to build, and com build, build, build a component, and then you can assemble components later, right? And here also, I mean, uh, th that's what we have, uh, particularly at MOA, right? I mean, uh, we have components that can be used in several taxes, right? And uh, tomorrow, I mean, let's say we build a component, and tomorrow uh, we can use it. In another in another form in another application, and this has really helped us. And that's where that's the, that's what we can do component based form. You can have your main form which is empty, and then you have a component, uh, very is isolated one, and then you have another component, another, and then you can just put your components here. And uh, what you can do is that then you can just post your main form. Uh, I'm just going to show you uh, later your main form and um, yeah so that's one component here that we have personal info um, okay prime six that should be prime seven okay here so i've just break out two very simple components so i'll put first name and last name here and then your contact info here OK, and then in, in my uh, parent component, I'll just reference my component here, our personal info or contact info, and this I'm using it in my main form. And then uh, those are those are the input properties. OK, and then uh, this is my model update. OK, uh, just one point here uh, really quick and uh, Whenever you're, in, in my opinion, right, whenever you want to design design a component, uh, you have to design it with a minimum dependency, right? I mean, you have your input and then it got your, and then you, you give your output. That's it. No dependency. Uh, you, you maybe, uh, in case, don't use any providers in your component. I mean, if it has to use it, has to use it, but then you have a dependency, then it's going to be really difficult maybe uh, to use it in another in my opinion, in another, in another module or something. Uh, but here is that the basic is that try to build a component with a minimum dependency, put your output, and then once you get your model data in your form, then just output that. So here what we've done. OK, I'm just going to go to the slides. It's going to be really quick. OK, so here I'm defining my main form, which is empty, and here uh, OK, and then here's my component. I have my main form here because uh, I have to add that component in my in my main form, right? This is how I do it. Basically, it's just under that 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 form that I'm defining here, personal inform form, uh, is just under the control. So I just added here in engine dot init, and once I'm done uh, to get all my data uh, from my model, I can just output that. Uh, that using the event emitter here. Um, here you can see it. Uh, personal info here. So as you can see here, I'm using value changes. That's the form to get all my data. I just fill up my backing model. So once I'm done uh, filling up my, my model, I just output that data here. I'll output it. And then in my parent component, I can just use this method to actually fill up uh, any model I have here, and then I can just submit the form, anything you want to do later. That's uh, very, very, very easy. 
this was a, uh, the, the, the best thing that you want to do is, is uh, dynamic control fields. And uh, these are the fields that you don't know in advance, right? And uh, this is very helpful and you use for Mari. Uh, because you don't know in advance uh, how many how many fields uh, you have. Uh, maybe when you file your taxes, you you will see right. You have we have so many maybe emoluments or dependents. So that's that. Both are things that you don't know in advance, right? And Angular for Mari actually helps you really, really, really there uh, for to do this V type of validation. And we have form Mari name and form group name. As you can see, this is another directive form group names. You're gonna reference. A particular variable in your template. That's form array. Uh, so that's your template here. So that's your form array. These are your these are another courses. Uh, we will see later uh, in my component how I'm referencing that. Uh, so this is uh, just go to the temp. Uh, this is the template first. Let's go to the component first. Okay, this is the main form. Okay, so I'm defining a form builder using group. So that's an empty array, right? Courses, this is for that array. So this array will contain all my, it, it, it will be an array of all abstract, abstract controls. So you can just keep adding. As you can see here, if I want to add a course, uh, I'll use this as coded push. And here I'm creating another group. And this contains course ID, course name, and, and payment, any, any fields that uh, you're seeing here. Yeah, I'll just uh, branch out really quick. I'm just going branch it. Okay, just see here. You can just keep adding. So what's going? Okay. Here. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So. Just one second. Okay. I'll just have to wrap up here really quick. Uh, here you can use asynchronous validation as well. And in state. Uh, there's a pending okay, state. That's very useful. Okay, in that case, your validation is 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 uh, has taken some time uh, in the back end. Uh, how you can update your form? All the code are uh, in the in the GitHub repo. So you can have a look at how you can use set value and patch value how we can actually update the form models using dynamic controls. And uh, also uh, what we have done is dynamic forms. If you want to build a form dynamically using a JSON, uh, I've done a very demo here. Okay, that's uh, that's a survey that we have done at MOA. We have used Angular reactive forms. So you can just uh, do a forms, build your forms dynamic. Uh, using a JSON, so you can have your fill your database, bring up that bring back that JSON up, and then build that form dynamically. So all these fields are, are from from the backend, and you can have your data here. Yep, that's that's about it. Then this is your JSON uh, after you have filled up the form, and uh, yeah, so you can just push that your API in your backend, and uh, you can just uh, save that data in your in your backend. Uh, that's a bit how uh, you have your components here in my dynamic forms. You can have a look at the GitHub repo. Uh, the example is there, and you can just for if you have any question, you can you can ask me. And yes, uh, thank you, thank you guys uh, for your time. Hopefully, that session was informative for you. For you, uh, it has really helped you. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, don't forget. You can uh, ping me anytime and uh, give me your feedback. And if you, if you think I can, if you think you can actually improve um, the demos I have, please, please let me know. I'll be, I'll, re I'll be really happy to listen to you guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot for this. No problem. Sorry for taking the time. Has <laughs> Not at all. I yeah. think Vidush was monitoring the YouTube chat. Okay. Yes. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, so actually, we do have one question from Irvin. Um, he was asking, "What's the difference from this approach using reactive, um, so reactive forms and a dynamically generated form from a JSON object?" 
Uh, actually, okay, I can just go really quick. So th there's no, there's no. Uh, I'm just using the same API. I'm just mm -hmm. still using reactive forms to build my dynamic form. I, if you give me one minute, I can just go just to answer that question, right? I just want to. I can go really quick on my example. For us at Emoy, it was a survey, right? We brought up a lot of question that a uh, lot of unknown question that can change, right? So you can say, let's say you have section one, uh, and then you have a list of question here. Then you have section two, one question here, and then section three, one question here. Uh, and here, uh, okay, uh, we're still using the same APIs, the same form group. I'm still using form I rename. Uh, I'm still using the form group name, and I'm still looping. And as you can see here in my component, component TS. Okay, I'm still defining a form group with an array, and here uh, I get my data. And for each for each section, I'm going to build my form group here. Okay, uh, this is a form group. So for each section that you have seen here, that's the data. I'm just creating a group, and I'm going to actually do a nested form array in this case. So because we have a list of question, right? And then uh, that question, then for I'm just going to loop from list of question and build another form array. That's it. And I have another component here that, uh, as you can see here, up the question. Okay, that's it. And it's just the same APIs, and in, in, in and it's much easier to use uh, reactive forms uh, to build something dynamic from your backend. So, okay. so it's it's it's, it's not, not really, really replacing, replacing it, it's rather working with it or building on top exactly. of it to, to exactly. provide something. Exactly. Yeah. It's just another scenario that uh, you can use for dynamic forms. Yeah, but 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 for, for dynamic forms, uh, maybe in my opinion, uh, you can't do complex validation. Maybe for very simple validation, like required, very simple ones, uh, you can use dynamic forms. But you have complex one, uh, don't uh, don't go for that approach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so for us, I think that was um, that was it for the questions. Of course, uh, as Ashley mentioned, if you guys have any more questions, he remains accessible. He even provided the link to his GitHub. So make sure to get in touch. And uh, with this, um, I guess we can conclude this session. Thank you for being here, Ashley. It was no, great to have you. you. Guys. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to all of us then. <laughs> and um, well, keep enjoying the rest of the Virtual Developers Conference. Um, and see you in the next one. All right.